into my heart into my heart come into my heart lord jesus come in to stay come in and dwell come into my heart lord jesus into my heart into my heart come into my heart lord jesus come in to stay come in and dwell come into my heart lord jesus amen praise the lord hallelujah amen it's so good to be in god's presence and it's so good to share the word of god with you one more time um, if you are just joining us um, this is hour of salvation and uh, pray to god that you will not be left behind after listening to this message i will be ministering on a topic that says god does not remove permanently our obstacles amen i'm gonna be ministering on a topic that says god never removes obstacles permanently because they are your destiny helper amen and uh, before i do so i would like to share a brief uh, word uh, and to enable our listeners um, get ready for this power-packed ministration because I'm going to be speaking as I'm led by the Spirit of God. Amen. So it's going to be a power packed ministration. We are going to dive into the scripture and explain some certain things you may be going through. You know, um, some obstacles in your life. And you may be wondering, why are you battling this sickness? Why are you battling um, cancerous sicknesses, breast cancer, whatever cancer, you know, uh, uh, glaucoma whatever it is cerebral palsy whatever it is you are going through in your life in your marriages in your career and you are wondering why me why are you going through all this and why can't God remove them but I'm gonna let you know that God never removes such situation in our lives permanently it is for a purpose Amen. It is for a purpose. And I'm going to back this up with scripture and let you know why you are the chosen one. Because God gives the toughest battle to his trusted allies. And it is a privilege that God considers you to be trusted with such situation, in such situation. Amen. But before I do so, if you're listening on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, uh, whichever thread and uh, um, whichever platform you are using to listen, I just want to thank God for your life and I want you to be partaker of this move of God. Why not you spread the gospel by becoming an evangelist? You can be an evangelist by sharing this message. You know, you never know who will be listening to it and whose life will be saved just because you shared it. Hallelujah. So let's uh be partakers in god's word let us be his disciples you can share this message but before i go deep into this uh, message of today i want to announce to us <clears throat> that we are going to be running um, a fundraising campaign a fundraising campaign um maybe later this week or early next week uh, to be precise but certainly in in within a week we'll be running a fundraising campaign for a church I visited the last time I went to um, Uganda I visited a church and uh, Resurrection Church in Uganda and like I said the it wasn't a planned visit but it is for the purpose that we are running this fundraising you know God positioned us for this moment you know, so I went to that church and uh, because it was 
unannounced, unplanned. And uh, the church tried as much as they could to make um, their facility conducive for the man of God to minister. You know, they tried to beautify it, you know. But even though when I went there, <coughs> I, I, I am not called to go to mega churches or mushroom churches. I only go, I am called to save souls, to affect souls, irrespective of the environment you are in. You know, I am called to go. So whenever I'm invited, I don't care uh, the condition of such place. You know, because I believe that wherever Jesus steps in, He makes it new. So when I went there after ministration, there's one thing I realized. I realized that that place is not inhabitable. It's not a place conducive for people to to live. It's a very terrible environment, and the people of God worship from there, and they don't even have most of the members sleep in the church because of accommodation issues, you know. And the church is, you know, is going through a lot of things. But there's something that shook me. They never asked me for money. They were so blessed that I came and I ministered to them. They were so blessed, heavily blessed, and they were very excited. Even until I left, they never asked me for a dime. No penny was requested. So I was moved in the spirit because I've never seen such genuine love, you know. They were just eager to hear the undiluted word of God. And I was talking to the Lord. I said, please, Father, I, 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 can't, I, I couldn't even eat or drink from such place. You know, the environment was was something you know it i mean i i can't just express um how it looks i can't i can't but i said lord please use me as a vessel to change the situation of my brethren you know so it was a prayer point i prayed and i i i summoned the meeting i called the, the the senior pastor of the church and some church members i through zoom meeting we had we've had several zoom meetings and while talking with them, I realized they had bigger problem than I thought, you know, and uh, it's financial problem and or what have you. So by faith, I asked them to look for um, a land and um, we can help them buying a land and putting up a structure, you know. To cut the long story short, um, um, they got a place, they found some places and they gave us the figures. And all, all it would need to put up a structure and stuff like that to relocate them, you know. And I said, okay, what would Jesus do if he had seen such situation? You know, the gospel is not just about telling people that the Lord is good. The gospel is all about demonstrating it. It's a good news. And I feel like it's time to demonstrate it. And I, I know how generous the people of God are, especially in America. I know how generous the children of God are, and I want to employ your honor with utmost humility. Um, when the time comes, when you see the fundraising video, please do the needful by supporting this church. We are going to run the campaign for about three to six months, a period of three to six months, depending, you know, but maximum of six months. And by faith, we are going to relocate them and. Uh, put them in a better place that they can serve the Lord, you know, because you can't serve God in a strange land. You can't serve God in a strange land. And uh, uh, God has been so faithful to them. Nobody had died of any kind of chronic illness, you know, because the place can expose them to all manner of diseases. But glory to God, they have been kept alive and healthy and until now. So we have to do something, people of God. So that's the essence of the fundraising and uh, God bless you and I know that you will be touched when you see the short video clip for the fundraising and you will click on the website to make a donation and any donation we made will be given monthly stewardship how much we have raised for that month towards that um, project. Amen. The gospel must be preached. Amen. And the gates of hell will not prevail in Jesus' name. All right, let's go into today's message. 
Hallelujah. Let's go into today's message. So today I'm going to be speaking on a very important topic because it's essence that I speak on this topic. God never removes obstacles permanently because they are your destiny helper. You may be wondering, what am I trying to say? Because you may be passing through a tough time in your life. I just want to speak to you. You may be passing through financial crisis. I, I, I believe this message is for you. You may be passing through um, a serious illness, chronic illness. The doctors, perhaps they told you is incurable. And perhaps they've given you an expiration date. They've told you, you know, uh, you are not going to live more than a certain period of time. And you're wondering, why you? Why you? Listen, God will not allow such sickness to come your way if he knew that you can't handle it. If he knew you can't handle it, he wouldn't. And I'm going to give you an example. Imagine, imagine when God called Moses and told Moses to go to deliver the Israelites who had been in captivity for 400 years in Egypt. The Israelites had prayed to God for deliverance. They have prayed to God for 400 years and God said to Moses it was time for him to go and deliver his people. Remember Moses never knew God. Moses was brought up, raising, he was raised up worshipping idols. So he never knew Jehovah God until God introduced himself to Moses and said, I am what I am. When Moses told, asked him, how will I go to them? If, what, you know, I don't know you. What if they ask me who is, what's the name of our God? You know, and Moses said, and God said to Moses, tell them, I am, I am, have sent you, which means whatever I said is what it will be. So for the fact God told him, go and deliver my people that they may worship him. The underlying word there was, they may worship me. So God asked him to go and Moses went. So the people had thought the deliverance would be so smooth. Imagine when God said, I'm going to bless you with children. When God said, I'm going to bless you with a, a, a husband or a wife, you might think, oh, it's going to be a smooth marriage. It's going to be raising the children. It's going to be fun. You know, when God promised you a new job, a new career path, you say, oh, it's going to be fun. But no blessing of God comes without obstacles and challenges. There is no blessing from God, none, that comes without obstacles and challenges. In fact, when God makes you such promises, that's when you are exposed to danger. Whenever God says, I'm going to bless you, hey, get ready for, for the final battle because devil never gives up. So when God asked him, go and deliver, he didn't, he came with a price tag. He came with a price tag of commitment. He came with a price tag of dedication. He came with a price tag of long suffering, meaning endurance. So God asked him, go, and he went. And like, as if he knew, they asked him, who are you, you murderer? Who are you to deliver us? You don't even know our God. Okay, what's the name of our God? They never believed him. He said, what's the name of our God? Until, until Moses said, I am, I am, have sent me. They never believed him. So they believed him because he mentioned the name of Jehovah God. Nobody knew the name of Jehovah God except the Israelites. So they believed him. Despite the obstacles from Pharaoh within Egypt, despite all those obstacles, despite the miracles they saw, still the Israelites complained. But there was a bigger obstacle. There was a bigger obstacle that I kept wondering. Why didn't God permanently remove that obstacle? Why did God give them a temporary relief? <clears throat> why did God allow such huge obstacle to remain instead of God to permanently remove it, but he gave them temporary measure, the Red Sea. The Red Sea was the biggest obstacle they encountered. But what did God tell Moses? Moses was looking for a way out. Moses was thinking, oh, it's time to pray. And God said, why are you disturbing me, Moses? What is it you have in your hand? Moses said, hey, stop. He thought it was a mere rod. But he said, hey, stop. God said, make use of what you have. So when God allowed those sicknesses to come your way and you are wondering why you, but you never knew that God had given you the avenue to escape. 
God had given you a means of healing. God had given you a solution to what you've been needing for. What you've been asking for is within you. It's not far from you. Now Moses says, stretch your hand, stretch the, stretch the staff upon the Red Sea and declare and it will come to pass. And Moses declared and the Red Sea parted. Now why did he not say, hey, you become a dry land? Because that Red Sea was meant to be a destiny helper to the Israels. It was meant to be their destiny helper, but they never knew. He parted the Red Sea until they crossed over to the other side. And he padded it and he stretched his rock, uh, the staff again and the Red Sea closed. What happened? He swallowed the enemies. The enemies drowned in the Red Sea. So you can see, you know, God allowed all these things to happen your way. There are people that God had placed in your life as your destiny helpers. Now, come on, they may come as those wicked uncles, those, those wicked uh, um, in-laws, those you think that are so wicked, business partners, those wicked siblings. You may think after all, after all, Joseph had a dream. He had a dream. His saying was that he believed so much in his blood siblings. He believed so much in, his, in them that he shared their dream. And, and, and Joseph was thinking, by sharing my dream, they will rejoice with me. But he never knew that God placed them in his family as a destiny helper. He shared those dreams, but what happened? They sold him. They, they, you know, they sorted a way to eliminate him. But they ended up selling him off. They felt they could kill the dream, you know, by selling him off. Why did God not kill those people permanently? Because they sold a man of God. But God allowed the siblings to see the testimony of Joseph. Listen, God did not authorize their killing because God never kills. But God allowed those people to leave, to see the testimony of Joseph. Listen, my brothers, you cannot hurt anyone, anyone with the blessing of the Lord. No matter how hard you try, you cannot kill, you cannot eliminate, you cannot distinguish, terminate a life of somebody that bears the blessing. The mark of God's blessing is impossible. It's nowhere written. It has never been done and it cannot start with your situation because Joseph was a case study. They tried to kill him because he trusted his siblings. He trusted his brothers. He believed so much in them that he was so happy, so excited to share his dream with them. But one thing Joseph knew, that these people are my destiny helpers. Joseph never for one day prayed for them to die. Joseph never one day prayed for them to be killed. His heart was filled with love. He had no regrets even when he went in and he was set up by Potiphar's wife. He knew. And what happened? It was the moment God revealed the blessings to him in the dream. Like I told you, whenever God said, I'm going to bless you, don't go home rejoicing. Get prepared. Put on the armor of God. Because that's when devil comes after you. And blessed are those that endure it till the end. Now I'm going to tell you something. Because I don't know what you may be going through. You don't know that those beggars that God has surrounded, there are some people in your life that are destiny helpers. Somebody you served someone and the person refused to settle you, the person refused to compensate you for what you have done. Listen, God is an expert when it comes to fighting his battle. As long as you bear the mark of his blessing, don't go to fight. Don't go to churches and start praying for somebody to die. That is the worst crime you can commit against yourself. Whenever you pray for somebody to die, you have killed your destiny. You have destroyed the blessing of God upon your life. Because the Israelites never prayed for the Egypts to die. No, the Egyptians met their death because they fought against the blessing of God. Joseph never prayed for his siblings to die. No, but they were punished when they encountered famine and they went back to Egypt and God positioned Joseph for forgiveness. So when you are encountering a similar situation, when you encounter a similar situation and your prayer topic is for the person to die, you have destroyed yourself. You have killed yourself. 
you have made a mess of that mark of blessing upon your life. You have definitely made a mess of it. You have. Because there are some people, their duty on earth is just to hurt you. They are created just to hurt you. Some people are demons. Demons bearing human body. Their mission on earth is to destroy you, is to kill. But they are destiny helpers. Because this is, I'm going to give you a biblical example. Take for instance. Why, let's, let's go, I mean, if you want to get the story about the, the Red Sea, you can read Exodus 14. But because of time, I'm not going to go into there. I'm going to read John chapter 17, verse 12. But, uh, let me tell you something. Jesus singled out one person as son of the devil. Jesus. Among his 12 disciples, one was a son to the devil. How possible? Jesus appointed son of the devil to be among his disciples. Now let's read John 17. The Bible says, verse 12 says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Jesus was making a report. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition. That the scripture must, might be fulfilled. He says, none we are lost except so, which means Judas Iscariot was never born again. Judas Iscariot was never saved. Judas Iscariot was created, was meant for this purpose. And Jesus knew. Now, when you ask what's the meaning of perdition, perdition, you can classify perdition as, 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 as Satan's reincarnate. Those people that we are cast down, when Satan was cast down from heaven because of rebellion, remember? There are some demons that came with him. There are some angels that converted to demons that came with him. These are, you know, you can classify them as perditions. Now, another way you can see it. These are, Judas was a demon, was a devil. But allowed to come in human form. He was a devil allowed to come just as Jesus is God that came in human form as a son of God. So Satan birthed his own son, Judas, for the purpose of betraying Jesus. That's why the Bible says, for the scriptures to be fulfilled. For the scriptures to be fulfilled. So there are people in your life, their mission is to destroy you but indirectly they are your destiny helpers i recall when i got married to my lovely wife a lot of people fought against us and some are still fighting especially some i thought we are families they fought all kind of rumors all kind of things and we are battling with those folks and we have our son, whom God has blessed us with, with cerebral palsy. Now, those people you thought that are families that could join faith with you to encourage you to fight your immediate problem, devil used them to be a distraction instead of us to focus on what God has given us and the purpose of God, we are not distracted. So you can see the plans of the devil. We are distracted from families, those we call families. Those we believe are our loved ones, devil used them to dent our love, to dent our image, to dent anything about us. But the Bible says wisdom is profitable to the wise, to those that know their God. Satan came. He tempted Jesus, but he planted a son among the disciples. Devil planted a son among his disciples, among the disciples of Jesus. Because he wanted to create a sin. And Judas came like somebody that was 
that so much loved God and loved the Israelites and wanted liberation for the Israelites. No. Devil never comes out straight because he's a coward. He comes out in a funny way. He comes with emotional stories, with emotional blackmail to deceive the gullible ones. But to those that know their God, we remain focused. I said, the only, we remain focused. Keep preaching the word of God. Keep doing what we are doing. But not for one day did we pray against those people that fought us and those of them that are still fighting. I told my wife, let's show them love. Whenever we knew that to pray, say, God bless them, that they may live and see and share our testimonies with us because they are families. And that's why God keep blessing us. Because we never lost focus. We never allowed devil to distract us because we know the scriptures. We know the scriptures. It was a family that fought Jesus. Devil reincarnated as Judas to fought him as a family. It were families that fought Joseph. It were family that fought that fought David. The father of David said, No, I have other that's Jesse. He said, I have other children, but this one amounts to nothing. Even when Samuel came to pray, he said, to anoint one of his sons as king, he says, no, this one amounts to nothing. It's only your family that devil can use, those that are so close to you, to destroy the purpose of God. But don't lose focus. David never lost focus. Joseph never lost focus. Even those that Moses went to deliver, were those that fought him. They rebelled against him in the wilderness and said, Hey, why have you allowed have why have you brought us out of out of Egypt? You would have allowed us to eat meat and bread. We need protein. You would have allowed us in Egypt to die. Why did you bring us out here? Those that God has sent you to liberate are the ones that will fight you, are the ones that will try to terminate your life, are the ones that will try to destroy you. But don't give up. They won't place you where you belong until they discover whom you are. But sadly, most don't discover whom you are until you are gone. And they will realize that God had given them a deliverer. But they allowed devil to manipulate them. They allowed devil to use them. I said this, why is it when somebody is alive, we always cry? We, sorry, when somebody is alive, we always fight the person. We are so... You know, we keep malice. We don't talk to the person. When the person dies, we send good women say, Oh, he he was a wonderful man, or she was a beautiful soul. Why not you celebrate the person when the person is alive? The child of God, maybe your family is against you, fighting you, ganging up. Please don't let them distract you. Don't let them distract you. There is a lady that was going through a similar situation. Just the way I'm telling you, I told her the same thing. I said, don't let them distract you, but never you pray against your family. Never you pray or think evil towards them. The moment you do so, you are destroying yourself. Wish them blessings. Wish them blessings. I have blessed a lot of people. I've blessed a lot of people, and I can tell you, I can I can't count the number of people I've blessed, but I can I can I cannot count it, but I can count the few numbers that we are thankful. Few. And I can tell you, many, many turned as backbiters. They are backbiters. Many. But that never changed me. That never stopped me from blessing. So I want to tell you something today. If you have backslided, if you have prayed against your family, I just want to make a short prayer with you. If you have encountered this situation and you have prayed for somebody to die, you have hurt yourself indirectly. But I, I, I understand the situation, but I want to pray for you right now. It's just very simple. Say, Lord Jesus, Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this moment. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. 
and I ask you to fight my battles. I ask you, Lord, to fight my battles. Let me be the spectator. As you do what you know how to do best in my life. From this day forward, I'm going to rely on you. Upon you the solid rock of ages on which I stand. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. If you make this prayer with me, it's a very simple prayer. No matter what you're going through, no matter the type of sickness it is, keep trusting God. Keep believing God. The best prayer is that you pray for yourself. That prayer you pray for yourself, there is nothing like it. And I want you to keep praying. I want you to keep trusting God. And be kind to one another. When you see someone <clears throat> that is hungry, instead of praying for that person that is hungry, please give the person food to eat. Instead of you praying for somebody, because I always say any problem that money can buy, that money can solve, is not a problem. So when someone is going through material needs, brethren, you don't wait until you are a millionaire or when you have more than enough to help others. Please extend that love to that person by trying to solve the person's problem. We went to that church and I saw the situation and I knew it's not a spiritual fight. It's a physical challenges. These are material challenges and we could be of help. And that's why we decided to help. Imagine if I had prayed for God to send a helper from, from the sky or from the moon to help them. Imagine how it would be. Even before we started this idea of fundraising, I've invested in them. I pay their rent. I take care of them. We pay their rent, rather. Pardon my French. We take care of them. Trusting God. That doesn't mean we have more than enough. But we believe God in whatever we do. So it's the easiest way for you to fight your battle. Keep doing good. Don't let people distract you. Don't let families distract you. Don't let families weigh you down. Don't let even those you have helped that turn that against you to weigh you down. Trust God. Trust God. He never fails. I can tell you of a truth. Jesus never fell. And he is a rewarder of those that do good. Seek him first and every other thing shall be cut added unto you. Until I see you next time, I remain always your humble brother, Apostle Sir Henry Exebiro. Shalom and be blessed.